course safety first, so we went ahead and made sure we had the jack squarely in the center of the oil pan. That way it won't slip off. It'll it'll hit the uh, cross member under the motor before it slips and goes anywhere. First thing, give me your best impression of a teenage girl. <laughs> Nailed it. Basically the automotive equivalent of looking at that steering gear and saying, wait until your father gets home. Welcome back to Crossfire Garage and Salvage. A channel dedicated to me teaching my daughter Caitlin how to work on old trucks. So she's prepared to begin restoration work on her 1941 Ford that we're planning to pull out of the weeds in Colorado in just a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe. This week, though, we're dropping the suspension on the front end of the C10 Revival. If you missed last week's video... Go watch it. Yep, go back and watch it. We dropped the back end seven inches. Made a Carolina squat. Accidental Carolina squat. Accidental. So we're lowering the front end. We're going to be pulling everything out of the front suspension replacing everything that's old, tired, and worn out, putting it all back together, gonna set this thing back down level and lowered. Oh, the clean white shirt you're asking about? The new sweatshirt? Yeah, listen, we've been, uh, we've been getting a lot of slack from the laundry lady about how dirty we're getting, so we're gonna see how long we can go today. Stay clean, see what happens. I don't know, maybe a fun exercise, sure. All right, so now that we're ready to go to work and stay clean, Caitlin, what are you? <laughs> it goes on the other side. That's a, that's a coat. All right. It looks fine, we're good. Now, <laughs> we're gonna pull these wheels off and start pulling everything out of here. Got the front jacked up and uh, of course safety first, so we went ahead and made sure we had the jack squarely in the center of the oil pan before we started running it. That way it won't slip off. It'll it'll hit the uh, cross member under the motor before it slips and goes anywhere. It's science. That's tightening it. Come on, oh, Caitlin. Oh, it was turning oh, that yeah, way. Right. No, that's loosening it. You're right. Told you. I was just testing you. All right, all right. This is a three speed. You had it on the low speed, or it somehow got switched to the low speed. Put it in my. Uh. jacked at all. It's fine, it's fine. Got it. And before we're done, actually next thing, go get some shoes on. Oh, fire. So someone very astutely last week noticed that the bed was still full of junk and uh, questioned how much that might be lowering the back end. So we took some measurements and I've done some calculations you can see here. Previously, the back end was at 33 and a half inch on the body line. We removed all the junk and it actually raised it a half inch, 34 inches. The front body line is at 39 inches. And by my calculation, carry the, nope, don't carry anything. Yeah, five inches. We've got to lower it five inches. Quick rundown on what we're doing here. We're gonna be replacing the shock, upper ball joint, corresponding lower ball joint. We're gonna be replacing the spindle here with a two and a half inch drop spindle, outer and inner tie rod ends, as well as the connecting tie rod. Uh, changing the idler arm here. We're gonna be removing the sway bar. We're gonna be removing the drag link that's connected to the end of this tie rod in there. We're gonna be pulling out this inner spring, cutting it, putting everything back together and buttoning this up with a five inch drop on the front. That'll be fun. You ready to start? Yes. All right, first thing, give me your best impression of a teenage girl. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay, this is our front end set up right here, Caitlin. <laughs> what we've got is the pitman arm that attaches to the bottom of the steering gear. So when you turn the steering wheel, drives the pump, turns this, moves it back and forth. This, there's a drag link that goes between the pitman arm and the idler arm. Passenger side, driver side, okay? Upper ball joint, high rod, 
tie rod ends, lower ball joint that we're going to have to press in and press the old one out, new shock. Same setup on this side except the idler arm instead of the pitman arm and we're missing the drag link that goes in between and this inner tie rod end will actually attach to the, the drag link that goes in between these two, okay? So that's what we're replacing on the front end, plus cutting the springs, plus cleaning everything up while we're in there. Ready to go? Yes. Which side do you want to start on? Either. Are you passenger or driver? Driver. Of course you are. Well, we had to break out the pneumatic gun and the black sockets. Oh, forgot I had those. Let's see if this will pull it. I have never in my life had so much trouble with a pitman arm like that. I, I can't get it. It's moved. You can see it's moved a little bit. But I'm, I'm leaving the pressure on there, soaked it down with some, some PB blaster. We're going to let it set. What are you working on? I broke the wire. All right, get a socket then. Put it on there. It's not a wire, it's a pin. What are you pointing at? The socket's over there. <laughs> sure, I'll be your gopher since you were mine. Don't run it all the way off from there, just run it down to the bottom. Uh. All right, we ended up having to cut these bolts to get that sway bar end link out of there. So I'm just gonna punch those through right now. Now we gotta get the castle nut off the top of here. Drop this idler arm out, Caitlin, and the whole drag link Oh, well, of course we got to get the pitman arm off the other side, but uh, we're getting somewhere. Just not sure how quickly we're getting there. Bad news, Caitlin. That is not the same part as that. Oh no. <laughs> I ordered a kit for a half ton. Can make it work. Seems to have... No, that's one thing we can't make work. Because this has the studs running through both ends of the idler arm and that one only has one and it's
I'm done messing around. Now we go to the steering gear box and we're going to do the same thing. Kind of on fire up at the top. It's on fire. I then I thought somebody was barbecuing. Water, what are you doing? burning um this all that oil off the end of it yeah guys i am right on the edge of just unbolting this whole steering gear pulling it out and replacing it well, that's the end of night one for us. A uh, couple of positives. Shirt's still clean. Um, also, we got everything except for the pitman arm off of the steering box. So, I heated it up well enough that... Uh, it shouldn't be on there. Yeah, well, also, I'm probably going to need to replace the steering box now. So, we got that thing just a choochin' over there. So, chooch. Um... Yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to bed tonight and I'm going to try not to think about how much I hate doing suspension work on rusty vehicles. I hate it more than cauliflower crusted pizza. Yes. It is the worst. I hate it more than the weeks after the McRib disappears every year. I hate it more than my math homework. I got something. We're fed up. That's what we're saying. Ain't nobody got time for this. Ain't nobody got time for that. Plus we got some in the wrong parts, so that's fun. One day later. We're giving up on the Pitman arm. Well, we're gonna go ahead and pull the steering gear out. And this is basically the automotive equivalent of looking at that steering gear and saying, Wait until your father gets home. I was done with this pitman arm. So now what we're going to have to do is disassemble the drag link, take the tie rod ends off, take the pitman arm out of the drag link. Same thing on this side. So this is all going to get disassembled, cleaned up. But the drag link is actually the only piece that we're going to be reusing. So new pitman arm ordered a new idler arm that's the right style that came in today we've got new tie rod ends to put this all back together and now we're going to have a new power steering pump that doesn't leak this one was leaking out of the, the front seal here it was leaking all over the place <clears throat> i mean it never made that big of a mess but it was leaking <laughs> so once again caitlin it's late 
time to go to bed, right? Or, yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, we come back to work here, taking the brakes off, getting ball joints out, getting the spring out, cleaning everything up, degreasing it, painting it, and we start putting it back together, both sides. There's a reason I left this until the very end. The last thing I wanted to do is everything we're doing right now. But it's already started. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Caitlin. Working on rusty suspension is an exercise in both perseverance and patience. And we are getting both in spades, aren't we? What do you think? You want to be a mechanic when you grow up? Like somewhere where it's dry. <laughs> One day later. Caitlin's going to grab the pins out of the back of these calipers. So we've got to remove the brake caliper, uh, get that out of the way. We're going to have to cut the bump stop behind it, get this thing passed behind the spindle between the spring out here over, over and out of the way so we can work on everything else. We're going to go ahead and break the upper and the lower ball joint nuts off of there, but keep them in place while we break them free because we don't want the nut off of it and the spring popping and sending everything flying. That is one side disassembled, and I know that was a short take for you guys on on time lapse, but uh, that was a royal pain in the rear end. So we've got the spring out. I went ahead and cut this ball joint off. I, I could have sat there and fought with it. It's none of the ball joint uh, tools that I have were going to work with that as thick as that bottom of that. Uh, spindle is. I know I'm going to be pressing new ball joints in here so I went ahead and cut it. We'll press this ball joint out, put a new one in. We're going to take this one out, put a new one in, get all this stuff cleaned up, degreased, painted, looking nice, and then uh, cut the spring, replace the rotor uh, and bearings, put them on a new spindle, and put that new two and a half inch drop spindle in here. And then we'll start buttoning it back together. Caitlin, Caitlin already has the hub over here. Caitlin, we're going to go ahead and pop the dust cap off here, remove the nut that's... No, 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 no. Grab a pair of those. Open them up more. We need to get this pin out and these these uh, spindle nuts are usually just hand finger tight. Castle so. bolts. Yeah, castle nut. So, go ahead and grab a pair of pliers. Needle nose pliers. I think I have them down here. Oh, here they are. Here. I'm on the floor. Pull that out. That's not the safest way to put a pin in there. Oh, why? Because the end wasn't folded over. It wasn't actually locking it. If the dust cap had come off of there, that pin could have come out, castle nut could have backed off there, and the whole thing would have come off of the spindle. What is all this in here? What are you missing? I said, what is all this in here? Well, this is grease. 
So that's a safety cotter pin. This is, yep, this is going to be a nut. Below that's going to be a washer. And behind that is going to be a bearing and a race. A race is what the bearing sits in. And that's all holding this rotor on the spindle. So the bearing that's inside of here is the bearing that the whole front of the vehicle rides on when it's running down the road. Hold on. Careful. Super slippery. Hold on, hold on. What is that? That's grease. This is our bearing. It just came out of there. We uh. want to keep that in there because we're reusing this hub. Uh. What do you do? Put your elbows in all that grease? Yep. So when we go to back together we're going to repack this larger inner bearing and this smaller diameter outer bearing it's not dry but it needed repacked even if we weren't doing this it would have been a regular service item to do that so when we take that bearing off of there we have to have a place a clean place to put it so there's no point in taking it off of there until we go get a nice piece of clean cardboard would you stop interrupting me? Oh, those boxes. Fine. We'll get a nice piece of clean cardboard. We'll set the bearing on it. And then we need to get this dust plate off of the back of the spindle. So what we're going to do here is repack these bearings. And the races we've checked out are in good shape. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a clean paper towel. Because the grease that's in here looks like a blend of lithium and red bearing grease. So I'm going to clean out the races the inside of this hub. You're going to get a clean towel and clean all that off as much as you can. And then I'm going to show you how to pack the bearing, okay? So the first thing you want to do is like two or three fingers and get a good glob in the middle of your hand. Well, ideally you would take it from the right hand. Then you're going to take the bearing. You see this open space here? Mm -hmm. You're going to go like this. You're just going to pack the edges. But look what's going to happen after you do that for a while. It's going to start coming out here. So you're packing the lower edge of that bearing until you start seeing some come out. Okay. We got the dust cover back on this new two and a half inch drop spindle. This is the right hand side spindle. So we're going to put our seal in here first. This just keeps the grease and stuff from working back behind the, the dust cap into anything, including the brake um, assembly. So the grease in here. Bearing goes all the way down. Cleaned up the races on this rotor here, but we want to go ahead and get a little bit of grease in here as well, fresh grease. No. Now this washer has an index key on it. See that right there? Index key. It's going to go right in there. Slide it down. And then our castle nut that we cleaned up here. Hold on, we don't need that pin yet. We don't need that pin yet. Always do this by hand. Don't ever do this with an impact gun or anything like that. You'll ruin your bearings. So what we're going to do is get a socket wrench here 
and hand tighten this to seat the bearings and then we're going to back it off until it's just snug. We're not going to put any torque on it and once it's snug then we'll put the key through and the cap back on. Okay, now we back that off, Caitlin. Let me go back. All right, now here's here's the hole for our castle nut. So I'm not. I'm gonna do. one goes down and to the side. That is the proper way to turn a cotter. What we're going to do now is cut this spring and so on a GM basically from like mid 70s to early 90s GM springs if you cut an inch, it'll lower it two inches in ride height. We have a two and a half inch drop spring. We need to lower the front inch, front five inches, which means we need another two and a half inches. <sighs> this makes me nervous. How about you, Caitlin? I just walked in. What are we doing? Measuring to cut the spring. <clears throat> so we've got to get it so it's setting basically level. Just and then we have to find where the bottom of the spring coil is at an inch and a quarter Just from the table. And that means we will, if we cut it there, we will have removed an inch and a quarter, which will drop it two and a half inches. Just cut it here and, yeah. Just wing it? Yeah. I feel better right there. What I'm going to do is use a cut off wheel first just to get a, a notch or a groove cut in here. That way I can set the saw in and it won't bounce around. Hopefully it'll make doing this a little bit easier. Hmm. Blade's wider than my spring space. Two weeks before we see what the truck looks like. Actually, might be that way anyway since we're uh, only halfway through and it's basically Friday night. Got graduation this weekend, grad parties tomorrow, friends spending the night tonight. Not mine, Caitlin's. So we're obviously not going to show you both sides of this. We're just showing you one side or some on that side, some on this side to give you a little bit of perspective on what we're dealing with here. So.
we're gonna do here is press this ball joint out of this control arm. This receiving tube, Caitlin, is larger than the ball joint. So it, it's gonna be pressing against the underside of the A-arm. And this removal cup here fits over the tapered top of the ball joint and it is flat against the, the, uh, the actual body of the joint. So now we just need to get a wrench on there and as we tighten this it's going to be pressing it's going to be drawing this down as these threads come up so this will be pressing that ball joint backwards out of that a-arm had a 90 dodge three-quarter ton one time and i was heading down the road with about 12,000 pounds on a flatbed trailer and this ball joint actually it was the upper ball joint was pressed in on the dodges and it pressed out on its own while I was driving, and the whole wheel went. <laughs> Drove home seven more miles with it like that. Put a new one in and tack welded it so it would never press out again. <laughs> you shouldn't do that, but you, you can do that. I should let this turn so it holds itself against the frame of the AR. It is really nice to have the right tools to do a job with. If you don't have one of these in your garage, they cost like 45, 50 bucks to buy that kit. Um, you can rent them from a parts store. So if you got to do this in a parking lot of a Walmart one day, Caitlin, just walk next door to the O'Reilly's and rent one of these. You can do it yourself. Well, we ran into a little bit of a problem here, guys. Kaylin, I think we're done for the week. I thought I'd be smart and come out here last night and just assemble these tie rod ends with the same length as the old tie rod ends. And as I was looking at them, I'm realizing you can tell this appeared a lot smaller than that, the diameter. So I got out my measuring tool, which is a crescent wrench, <laughs> and confirmed, yes, in fact, it's not just a trick of my eyes. Then I started trying to put pieces together. And the new tie rod ends are too small for the drag link. And the upper ball joints, they're too small to fit in the, the uh, the top of the spindle. The lower ball joint is actually too large of a diameter to press into the lower A-arm. So when we grabbed when we grabbed that whole front end kit for the steering and suspension and the idler arm was wrong. We realized that a couple days ago. Uh -huh. I probably should have checked everything else. They just look like they're the right parts, but they're not. So we're going to be done for this week. We got the whole front end blown apart. We were hoping to be able to put it back together this weekend and put that thing on the ground and show you guys what this is going to look like, but that's not going to happen. So called around this morning to some local parts stores. It's Saturday here. Uh, nobody has everything in stock. And so it's going to be sometime next week before we get back on this with work and school. And so thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Kaylin, you got anything to tell them? Leave a comment. Leave us a comment, and uh, we'll see you back here next week for part two when we finish the front suspension drop. Thanks for watching. Okay, I'm done. <laughs>